What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Trip Young here for Real Fans Real Talk. Uh, we had a whole lot of boxing action going down the last uh, couple of weeks, and we still got some more to come. Um, and you guys know we're huge boxing fans on the show, and uh, whenever we uh, you know have some big things going on in boxing, we like to go to one of our our legendary boxing friends. Uh, maybe it'll be Iranda Blade Barkley. Maybe it'll be Aaron Davis. Uh, we got a couple of cats uh, that you know that, that that have become family. Two real fans, real talk. Uh, but you know, luckily, uh, right here in the Bronx, we got the Morris Park Boxing Club, which is actually ran by retired WBA welterweight champion Aaron Davis, and uh, he's he's one of our boxing aficionados. Uh, that we like to go to whenever there's something big going down in boxing. And since there was a Legends match, uh, you know, we decided that we had to go see one of the legends of uh, in the sport of boxing, uh, Aaron Davis. And, uh, you know, it is COVID going on right now, so we had to do things a little bit differently. But, again, Aaron, Aaron Davis is such a great sport, such a friend of the show. You know, anytime we call him up, he's ready to talk boxing. He's ready to talk fighting. Whatever's going down in the sport, he's down. Um, so, you know, we, we sent over the crew over to Morris Park to catch up with with uh, with, with Aaron Davis and just talk to him and break down uh, the the whole card. Uh, I believe it was put on by by Triller. Uh, they had Snoop Dogg there doing the announcing. Snoop Dogg did an amazing job, by the way. Um, and shout-outs to Snoop because he actually has a deal in place now with Triller. They're going to be starting up a, a boxing league, um, which I thought is amazing. Uh, you know, we, we, we all for those uh, was the seven uh, different streams of revenue. Snoop has just added another one. He's, Snoop has always been innovative, though. Uh, he's always changing the game, uh, you know, w with whatever he does. So, you know, we're actually, you know, we're so excited about that, looking forward to see what uh you know Snoop and Triller can put together moving forward. Uh maybe we'll see uh maybe maybe possibly a rematch with uh with Nate Robinson and uh Jake Paul. I know Nate wants to is itching to get back in the ring. Maybe we might see there's been a couple of other guys uh that have called him out Evander Kane from the NHL. Um one of one of hockey's best players right now has called out Jake Paul, Le'Veon Bell, you know, put up some some video footage of uh, him getting it in in, in the gym uh, boxing, and he's called out Jake Paul as well. So maybe we, you know, maybe we'll get one of those. We'll see. We'll keep you guys posted with that one. But uh, today we are here to talk about that Mike Tyson, uh, Roy Jones Jr. card, the Legends. That that's definitely a Legends card. Um, first of all, Aaron, what's going on, man? Uh, Champ, we appreciate you uh, always making your home over here at uh, Morris Park, our home. Um, as an extension, you know, we always appreciate you. We got a lot, a lot of love for you, champ. You always come through for us. With that being said, we're gonna jump into the undercard first. That uh, Nate Robinson versus Jake, uh, Jake Paul, the knockout felt around the world. Uh, what should or could Nate Robinson have done differently in that fight? Um, well, he should have should took the time a little more. Um, kept his hands up. He looked like some, he was trying to street fight. He looked like he had no training at all. Like, but he probably did train, probably did a lot of pad work. A lot of people think boxing is pad work. You can do pad work, all that stuff they call it, use the footwork. But when you fight, you got to strap. And he did strap, but he had no basics at all. Um, he should have kept his hands up. Um, he just rushed a little too much. He has no basics, he just was throwing punches. Never seen him throw a straight jab or anything. Came in, just throwing punches, head straight up in the air. And um, he got caught, he just looked like he, they say he been in the gym for two months, he looked like he been here for two months. Yeah, I agree, Champ. And uh, we kind of all said the same thing uh, on Real Fans Real Talk. It just, you know, it didn't look like Nate Robinson had trained enough um, you know, people get that that this idea of just because you may have been in a street fight or you know, you might be tough, got that bravado going on, you could just dump jump into a boxing ring, and it's definitely uh, it's it's not that it's not it's not easy uh, at all. Clearly, uh, Jake Paul has been training for some time now. This is not his first fight. Um, 
You know, this is actually his, his, uh, his second uh, knockout, I guess. You know, he's been training. This is something that he wants to do. He's 23 years old, you know, and he's actually in the gym training and, and, and trying to, um, you know, get things together. And it's, and boxing is not a sport where you can just say, oh, yeah, I want to do this, and, uh, and, and, then, uh, and then jump right into the ring, and boom. You know, you're the, you're the you're the champion of the world. It it doesn't work that way. Yeah, it just it just it just doesn't work that way. Um, but so so do you do you think it's smart for Nate Robinson to get back into the ring? Um, yeah, I think that. I mean, I wouldn't say it's smart. I mean, if that's something you want to do. Yeah, but I think he should get in there with somebody with his, his on his in his lead. Um, the caliber fighter that he is on the same level. And that's how he's gonna learn. I think he should spar a lot more. And uh, I think he should be all right. I mean, the knockout was pretty bad. Uh, so I don't know if if I think he should, but I mean, this is coming from the champ. If the champ says if he's trained properly, he may be able to, you know, he'll he'll, he'll be all right. I'm gonna take your word on on, <laughs> on that one, champ. Uh, but what what would you say to to Nate Robinson if he was training at uh, at the Morris Park boxing? Um, I, I gotta keep your hands up, throw punches, bring your hands back to your face. Um, very basic. I just show him basics. That's it. And let him get his own style. The reason boxing is, is so messed up today, everybody wants to show everybody some type of, you know, um, like, sort of like a Mayweather style. No basics, you know? And I always say Mayweather, he knows how to fight. He got his basics. Mayweather's a great fighter. He's a good fighter. And he does what he do. And that's his identity. Nobody has any, they own the identity. Most fighters have somebody else out there to meet. Most coaches give people somebody else out there to meet. Most, 90% of the coaches never fought before, never strapped up, had any type of experience. And I'm not saying that you have to be a, a fighter to be a coach because you had a lot of great coaches who never were fighters, but they was in the gym with teachers. They seen teachers teaching, they did whatever, they taught their fighters whatever they saw great teachers teach. But now today, you got non-teachers, and then you got somebody who come in the gym wanting to be a coach, and he's teaching what the non-teachers are teaching. I got you, I got you. <laughs> words, words from the champ. I mean, this is somebody we're talking about, you know, with, with you, Aaron Davis, and, and everything that you've accomplished in your career. Uh, you had one of the biggest uh, fights in the city which actually didn't go down in the city. Uh, the war, Brooklyn versus the Bronx, the Battle of the Boroughs, you versus Mark Breeland. Uh, shout out to Mark Breeland, who's also family of the show. Uh, most recently was Deontay Wilder's uh, trainer, the, the former heavyweight champion of the world. Um, so big shout out to Mark Breeland. But you two actually, you know, you had the Battle of the Boroughs, and that was when you actually took the uh, WBA uh, welterweight title. You actually took that one away from uh, Mark Breeland with the knockout. Um, so, you know, I, listen, that, that's, and that's why we come to you. That's why you're our boxing aficionado. We know that you understand the sport of the fight, the sport of boxing. Um, you got a lot of guys you're training here. You got a couple of, couple of amateur champs right now. You got a couple of guys getting ready for the golden gloves that'll be coming out of Morris Park, um, which I think is, you know, is amazing. And again, that's why we always come to you, champ. We appreciate you, uh, showing us love. Anything, there's something going down. All I got to do is call you and, you always, yeah, man, come on, come on, come on down to the gym, man, come on. So, you know, we appreciate you for that. Um, but let's jump into the heavyweight uh, division, man. And that heavyweight fight, the Legends fight, Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. Uh, two guys, you know, that in their primes uh, were arguably the greatest <laughs> to do it. You can make a case for both of those guys. Uh, Mike Tyson being the youngest heavyweight champion ever, um, you know, he he's had his his bit of trouble outside the ring, which you know kind of led to some of the issues that he's had inside the ring. But definitely a legend, one of the greatest heavyweight uh, champions of all time, undisputed. And you had Roy Jones Jr., who who just kept jumping up from weight class to weight class to weight class, division to division, winning titles after title after you know at each level, making his way on up to the heavyweight uh, division where he did beat uh, John Ruiz and take a belt. Um, 
you know, so two legends in, in their own rights. Not a fight that was probably on anyone's spectrum while they were, you know, in their primes just because, uh, you know, when, when Roy Jones actually did make that move up to heavyweight, Tyson was already kind of, you know, out and, and, and kind of done. So it's not something that we really looked at happening. But, you know, it's always a, a, a nice thing, you know, especially for somebody that plays video games, knockout kings and whatnot, when you get to put the different fighters from different eras against each other. Um, I don't know if I necessarily would have put Roy Jones Jr. against Mike Tyson, but, you know, they were definitely two of my favorite fighters uh, growing up and watching the, the sport of boxing. So I was a little bit intrigued. Uh, I was a little bit intrigued to see this fight go down, uh, but it wasn't as entertaining as I thought it would be. Uh, why do you think that is? Why, why wasn't Mike Tyson... Versus Roy Jones Jr. more in the tank. Well, Mike Tyson was trying to fight. Roy already had his plan already. He, he's not going to fight. He's going to hold. Um, Mike Tyson, he was, he was really trying to get him. It's hard to fight somebody who's not trying to fight you back. I've been through that in my career. Um, Roy was just trying you know, just let the rounds go by. Let it be a decision. Wasn't trying to get hit. Yeah, I agree. And that's another thing that we spoke about on uh, Real Fans, Real Talk. Mike Tyson was bringing the fight to Roy Jones, uh, but it just didn't look like uh, Roy Jones really wanted to wanted to be in there after a while. Uh, I mean, from the first round, Mike started hitting him with them power shots to the body, and immediately Roy Jones started wrapping up Mike Tyson. Uh, you know, I guess he must have felt how, how strong those punches were and was like, you know what, maybe this wasn't necessarily the right decision for me at this age. Um, you know, but uh, but shout out to, to Roy. You know, the, the fight went to distance. Uh, you know, obviously the draw, you know, kind of sucks. And I, I feel like, you know, Mike definitely got him, uh, you know, in the fight. But, you know, what are you, what are you, what are you going to do? Um but you know, for you and I know that both of these guys are are are, are friends of yours. But uh, would you watch Tyson again? Oh yeah, sure. I watch him with another fighter, um, somebody like a Vander Holderfield. I think the Holderfield is a good fight for him. I even think Riddick Bowe would be a good fight. Right now, I don't think Riddick Bowe's in shape, but I think if he had a fight like that, he would do the best he can do to get himself in shape. Yeah, you know, I agree. I'd love to see Mike Tyson again with someone who actually wants to get in the ring with him and fight. Clearly, you know what I'm saying? Or excuse, I'm not going to say clearly, but it just didn't look like Roy Jones wanted to be there. And after that first, after he took a couple of them hits, it's different being in there with Mike Tyson. You know what I mean? And, and he actually in the ring, you got to feel and, and absorb those blows. So it just didn't look like he wanted to be in there. It was a lot of holding throughout the fight. Mike did what he could. But you know, if 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 there's a, if there's another legend that wants to come back out and is actually okay, you know, throwing blows and actually getting in there and mixing it up with Tyson, I'd love to see it. Um, what about Roy Jones though, man? Would you would you watch Roy Jones again? No, I advise Roy Jones not to fight. I like Roy Jones. Don't want to see Roy get hit, hurt. Roy. Last few fights he fought before that, the losing fights yet. He fought guys he was supposed to beat up, supposed to knock out. He's not taking the good in the head right now in the brain for some reason. He get hit and he falls out. I don't think he should fight anymore. He has a lot of money. He has kids, you know. He has a family. He's had good health. He has a great job. And he's a good guy. I would love to see Roy pack it up, continue on with his competition career. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for me. And you know, and Roy's actually been fighting more recently. I think his last fight was maybe like three, three years ago, something like that, three, four years ago. So he's actually been fighting more recently than Tyson. And it's not like, you know, and I, and again, I'm a, I'm a fan of of Roy Jones, you know, in his come up. But we're not seeing that Roy Jones anymore. So yeah, I think it, it, I agree with you. I think it's time. Okay, <laughs> last question. Since the legends are coming back, what would it take to get the retired WBA welterweight champ Aaron Superman Davis back in the boxing? 
Well, I would need two brand new knees because I need two knee surgery. <laughs> two knee replacements. And then I would probably need a year to get myself together. Oh man, thank you so much, Aaron, for your time. It's always a pleasure having you on the program. Um, I'm gonna have to get you again to get to to uh, to recap that uh, Errol Spence Jr. versus Danny Garcia fight that'll be uh, uh, coming coming up right after this one. Um, with that being said, though, for myself, Trip Young, uh, real fans, real talk, man. I'm up out of here. Peace. Make sure y'all make sure y'all if if you if you are, if you are um, you know, trying to get into the sport of boxing, hit up hit up Aaron Davis, uh, hit up the Morris Park Boxing Club. They're both on Instagram, on Facebook, and uh, if you want to get that training in, why not learn from one of the best uh, in the sport of boxing, Aaron Superman Davis? Thanks again, man. Appreciate you. Fuck this is your African King of Comedy, Michael Blackson. You watching real friends, real talk. Get real with it, my son. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. 